Chapter 12 of Masters of the Vortex by E. E. Smith Chapter 12 Vesta Practices Space Seal The connection was made and he brought Lensman Strong up to date, concluding, So will you please get hold of planetography with a crash priority on anything they know about that point? I'll do that, Storm. I'll call you back. Since Lensman are potent beings, the call came soon. There's one sun there, Strong reported. But it doesn't amount to much. A red dwarf? It may or may not be a single. Unexplored. Astronomical data only. How close did I come to it? Allowing for proper motion, you speared it. Less than two hundredths of a parsec off. And there's nothing else within twelve parsecs. Stars are mighty thin out beyond the rim, you know. I know. That nails it, Phil. They don't know, of course, whether it has any planets or not. No, I see what you mean. Shall I get a special on it for you? I wish you would. It'd be worthwhile, I think. So do I. I'll call Haynes and ask him to rush a ship out there to get us a fine tooth on it. Thanks, Phil. And there was something else. Oh, yes, your friend Fairchild. Narcotics wants him. Badly. I'm not surprised. Alive? That might take some doing. Or dead. No difference, as long as they have his head for positive identification. And at Cloud's surprised expression, Strong went on. They don't want him planting any more draconian broadleaf, is all, which he'll keep on doing as long as he's alive and loose. I see. Wish I'd known sooner. We probably could have caught him on Tominga. I doubt it. They've been checking back on him, and he's a very, very sharp operator. He makes long flits fast in peculiar directions. But if you stumble across him again, grab him or blast. Just a minute, Chief. You mean to say the patrol can't find him? Just that. He's in with a big, strong mob. Probably heads it. They've been looking for him ever since you found out that he wasn't killed on Decca. I'm... I'm speechless. But Graves... But Graves was dead, of course. Didn't anybody know Fairchild's personal pattern? That's exactly it. Nobody they could get hold of knows his real pattern at all. All we've got that we can depend on are his retinals. That shows the kind of operator he is. So if you get a chance, blast him, but leave at least one eye whole and bring it in and deep freeze. Nothing else at the moment, is there? Not that I know of. Clear ether, Phil. Clear ether, Storm. The plate went black and Cloud turned soberly to Joan. Well, that clears Fairchild up, but doesn't help with the real mystery. So unless we can dig some more dope out of this stuff on the chart, we can't do much until we get that fine tooth. Joan left the room, and Cloud, after racking his brain for an hour, got up, shook himself, and went down the corridor to his private office, which had long since ceased to be private as far as his friends were concerned, where he found Vesta and Flaskin talking busily in Space Seal, or rather the Vagian was talking the pilot was listening attentively. Think I'm built? You ought to have seen this tomato, Vesta was narrating blithely. What I mean, she's a dish. She went into a wrigglesome rhythm which, starting at the neck, flowed smoothly down to her splendidly modeled body to the ankles. Stacked. She's stacked like Grillroy's tower, Buster. An honest-to-God dish, believe me, and raring to go. We're on one of those long weekend jaunts around the system, you know. One of those deals where things are pretty apt to get just a hair off the green at times. But hey, Plaskin protested, you said yourself a while back you wasn't old enough for that kind of monkey business. Oh, I wasn't, Vesta agreed candidly enough. I still ain't. I just went along for the ride. And your folks let you? Plaskin was shocked. Natch, Vesta was surprised. Why not? If a tomato don't learn the facts of life while she's young, how's she going to decide what's good for her when she grows up? With or without a license, I gotta butt into this, Cloud announced, also in Space Eel, seating himself on a couch and crossing his legs. He, too, was shocked, but he was also intensely curious. Did you decide, Vesta? Before the girl could answer, however, Joan Janowick came strolling in. Is this a private brawl, or can anybody get in on it? She asked gaily. I invited myself in, so I'll invite you, too. Come in and sit down. He made room for her beside him and went on in English, speaking for her ear alone. Just as well you don't know Space Seal. This story Vesta is telling would curl your hair. 
Wake up, Junior. Joan did not speak, but poured the thought directly into his mind. Do you think that cat girl, that kitten, can block me out of her mind? Oik, what a whiff. Excuse, please. My brain was out to lunch. But you'll get near folks, Sister Janowick. It'll be interesting in a way you haven't thought of, too, Joan went on. Vegans are essentially feline, you know, and cats as a race are both fastidious and promiscuous. Thus, conflict. Is that what this is about? Could be. I haven't tried to read her. Then aloud. Go ahead, Vesta. Did the experience help you decide? Oh, yes. I'm too finicky to be a very good mixer. There's just too damn many people I simply can't stand the smell of. There's that smell thing again, Flaskin said. You've harped on it before. You mean to say you use people's noses are that sensitive? Absolutely. No people smell alike, you know. Some smell nice and some just plain stink. For instance, the boss here smells just wonderful. I could hug him all day and love it. Dr. Janowick, too. She smells almost like the skipper. You're nice, too, Flaskin. And so is Mel, Amy, and Nadine. And Tommy ain't bad. But a lot of the others are just too schronzified much for my stomach. I see, Cloud said. You do give some people a lot of room around here. Yeah, and that's what got this chick I was telling Flaskin here about in such a jam. She's been bending her elbow pretty free, taking a jab or so of this and that between drinks. But she ain't sozzled, you understand. Not by many a far piece. Just lit up like Nyok's spaceport. She's maybe been a bit on the friendly side with a few of her friends. So this big bruiser, not a vegan, no tail even, an Aldebarian or some such like, and a Class A triple prime stinker, gets interested in a big way. Well, he smells just like a Tellurian skunk, so she brushes him off, kind of private-like a few times, but it don't take, so she finally has to give him the old heave-ho right out in front of everybody. You slimy stinker, I've told you a dozen times it's no dice, you stink, she says loud, clear, and plain. This ship ain't big enough to let me get far enough away from you to hold my breakfast down, she says, and this burns the eight plenty. Look at here, babe, he says, coming to a boil. Bend an ear while I tell you something. No clevious vegan chippy's going to play high and mighty with me, see? I'm fed up to the gozzle. So come down off your high horse right now or I'll... Yell what? She snarls and puts a hand behind her back. She's seeing red now and fit to be tied. Make just one pass at me, you kindlelighting slime lizard, she says, and I'll bust your pazificated skull wide open. He goes for her then, but being a vegan, her foot works a lot better than his. She ducks, sidesteps, pulls her sap, and lets him have it, but good right behind the ear. It takes the ship's croaker an hour to bring him to, and the skipper's so scared he blasts right back to Vagia, and the croaker calls the hospital and tells him to have a meat wagon standing by when we sit down. A very interesting and touching tale, Vesta, Cloud said then in English but pretty rough language for a perfect lady, don't you know? How the hell else? Vesta started to reply in space seal, then switched effortlessly to English. How else can a lady, however ladylike she may be, talk in a language which, except for its highly technical aspects, is basically and completely profane, obscene, vulgar, lewd, coarse, and foul? Not that it bothers me, of course. Nor did it, as Cloud well knew. When a master of languages studied a language, he took it as a whole, no matter what that whole might be. Every nuance, every idiom, every possibility was mastered, and he used the language as it was ordinarily used, without prejudice in favor or emotional bias. But it's so pitifully inadequate. There's so much that's completely missing. Flaskin objected before, remember, that there wasn't any word in the space seal he could use, would use, I mean, to describe Melamy as his wife. And my brother, Zampitkin, I've mentioned him? Once or twice, Cloud said dryly. That was the understatement of the trip. He's a police officer, not exactly like one of your commissioners of police or detective inspector, but something like both. And in Space Seal, I can call him only one of four things, the English equivalents of which are cop, lawman, flatfoot, and bull. What a language! But I started to tell his story in Space Seal. I'm going to finish it in Space Seal. It'll be fun in a way to see how close I can come to saying what I want to say. Then switching back to the lingua franca of deep space. So that's how come my brother got into the act. 
The hospital called the cops, of course. So he was there with the meat wagon and climbed aboard. He was all set to pinch the Jane and throw her in the can, but when he got the whole story, and especially when she says she's changed her mind about circulating around so much, it ain't worth it, she says. She'd rather be out and out hermit than have to have even one more fight with anybody who smelled like that. Of course he let her go. Let her go, Cloud exclaimed. How could he? Why, sure, boss. Vesta, wide-eyed, gazed instantly at her captain. The ape didn't die, you know, and she wasn't going to do it again, and he wasn't a vagian, so didn't have any relatives or friends to go to the mat for him. And besides, anybody with one-tenth of one percent of a brain would know better than to keep on making passes at a frail after she warned him how bad he stunk. What else could he do, chief? What else indeed, Cloud said in English. I live and occasionally I learn. Come on, Joan, let's go and devote the imponderable force of our massed intellects to the multifarious problems of loose atomic vortices. On the way, Joan asked. Our little Vesta surprised you, Storm. Didn't she you? She had me gasping like a fish. Not so much. I know them pretty well, and I used to breed cats. Scent, hearing, they can hear 40,000 cycles. The fact that they mature both mentally and physically long before they do sexually. Some of their utterly barbarous customs. It's quite a shock to learn how queer, shall I say, some of the Vagian moors are to us of other worlds. Queer is certainly the word, as queer as a nine-credit bill. But confound it, Joan, I like em. So do I, Storm, she replied quietly. They aren't human, you know, and by galactic standards they qualify. And now we'll go and whack those vortices right on their center of impact. We'll do that, chum, he said. Then in perfect silence he went on and thought. Chum, sweetheart, I meant. My God, what a sweetheart you'd. Storm! Joan half shrieked, eyes wide in amazement. You're sending! I'm not either, he declared, blushing furiously. I can't. You're snooping. I'm not snooping. I haven't snooped a lick since I started talking. You got it back there, Storm. She seized both his hands and squeezed. You did it, and neither of us realized it till just this minute. End of chapter 12